Hello and welcome back. I think I mentioned a couple of times in the last few videos that I was going to have a go at uh, creating one of these Chuff Chuff sound boxes um, as, a, as a 3D print. I've, I've got a couple of uh, models which are, are short of them. I've been swapping them around a bit. Um, so I've had a go over the, the last couple of uh, days or so or evenings after work. If you see the, uh, the, the image there of the, uh, the SketchUp drawing that I've done, you can see uh, I've drawn it out and with what we've ended up is with with this item here. So this one I've just glued, it hasn't fully dried, that membrane there just needs to uh, fully dry on there before I put the what I'm going to call the, the tone arm on. So uh, again, if you just have a have a look at that. So we'll have a have a look in the moment with the with the locomotive. But I've got this in the uh, lo the Lord Westwood at the moment. Um, and here's one of the the, the metal, what we're calling the, the tone arm with a little bit of sandpaper stuck to it there and it's quite effective. Um, the slight difference to the model that, uh, over the, the original, that's, that's an original there. Obviously this is a, a production made out of plastic, it's slightly harder than the PLA that I'm printing with. Um, there's a slight taper on the, the back end of here and I've decided to make that upright on my model or reproduction of it. Uh, just because it'll put slight steps in it and I, I thought a slightly stepped surface wouldn't reflect the sound quite as nice as a flat one so it, it sounds slightly deeper than the, the original but it, it's a fairly effective but uh, we'll have a look at that so when they come off the 3d printer if you have a look at the inserts the pictures a and c1 printing um, and this is one of that's uh, finished and cooled down so it should be relatively easy to remove from the the print bed so this is an Ender 3 version 2. You can see it's become rather dusty. It's got a, a heated bed which, which helps models stick to it. So let's see if we can pull that off. There we go. And because of the, uh, the design of the model, it has what's called support structures. So if you see that little piece there, that, that little protrusion there, I think is required to, uh, to hold the sandbox um, inside the tender. The, the top of the, the molding pushes that down and holds it in place. So to print that and let the light flat, you need to print an area around it and that just simply pulls away or it needs a little encouragement with a, with a scalpel. And uh, because this part here is an overhang, um, there's a support structure on that otherwise, because you can't print in midair. So if you, if you look at that, so as that prints, that would just sort of droop and very, very, very difficult for the printer to, to maintain that, that edge. So you put what's called a support structure in there as if you, you draw the model and the uh, when you slice the the, uh, the drawing to go to print it, it will put the support structures in for you um, so it's quite an interesting process there's many many videos on the online which can explain that way better than I can so if you just reference that back to the image I'll just play the put the drawing in the corner of the screen again and you can just see how that's printed see it's relatively smooth print on the inside it will print in slightly higher resolution than this this is the medium setting so it can you can get a finer result but it seems this isn't going to be sort of seen this is going to be installed inside an object inside the tender so there's another one that's a slightly earlier variant when i first printed it i didn't have those two guides at the back so i think if we uh, if we get ready We've got a couple of locomotives to run. We'll see the Lord Westwood with this in, and I've got the, the TC Pacific, a, a slightly later variant um, that, we, that we're going to see running with some uh, transcon late transcontinental coaches. I made the tone arm. This is a, a plant label. Um, I think this is a copper or bronze plant label. Plant, plant, I can't speak. Plant label. I've just cut a three and a half mil strip off that. Um, it's all quite effective. And uh, here's one I've uh, I damaged when I was. Uh, making it there, I've stuck sandpaper, I don't think we're getting a focus on that. So uh, yeah, so I think we should uh, run some trains and, and have a look at these in action in a moment. So there I've got the, uh, the, the slightly later version of the TC Pacific with a, a flying Scotsman style tender, eight wheel tender there. And I think that was just to enable it to have the, uh, the chuff chuff sound within it. It's got, it's got plated wheels. And if you want to see inside this model, I'll leave a link to an earlier video with it. It was in, in a set whose uh, number I can't remember with, with some freight wagons 
in the uh, early 70s. But uh, these coaches I decided to run it with today were, were in a, also in a set, which I think was destined for Australia in the uh, early 70s as well, 71, I think. And it was the Streamliner set, RS101. So it was made up with um, a coach. So I think we've got the coach there. You've got the seating in there. And that was uh, R4400. And then uh, we've got another coach there. That's another coach. And then we have the diner there. So that's got diner on the side of it there. And that was um, R4430. And then the observation at the end was 4410. So let's just have a look at that. And we've got that beautiful uh, observation dome on the top and the curved end, I think it's quite pretty. Would have been nice to have a, a lamp on the back of there. So I think he's had a very short run just for that set in the uh, early 70s. And as far as I know, I, th I think it was, they were just used in there. They weren't sold as solo models um, here in the UK. So. They're quite nice things. They're painted. They're quite fragile. We'll have a have a closer look at them in a moment. But uh, let's give these a little power and have a look at them run. And we'll uh, hear the chuff chuff sound in here. So this is an original um, sound box in this one. So uh, I have been swapping them around as I as I've said earlier because a, a couple of models of mine are, are short of a short of the sound box. So there we go. Now she does have a synchro smoke unit in it, but I have got that disconnected at the moment. I think we need to take a little bit of power out of that there. There she is. Let's just bring her to a stop there and we'll have a, have a closer look at that. So she's uh, quite a pretty thing. It's almost like a a sort of uh, silky plastic that the uh, the body of the locomotive is made in. It's quite nice. I think that bell's separately fitting. As I say, if you want to have a closer look at this model, I'll uh, leave a link to the earlier video with it. And there's that uh, Flying Scotsman style tender. It has buffers on the back as well. And it's got the the eight wheels and it does have the uh, the chuff chuff sound sitting within that. So it's it's quite effective. Let's have a, a quick look over these coaches while we're here. So you can see those lovely seats for the window there. And we've got a, a number on, on the side of the coach there. We've got 70831. So I have three of those coaches. You can see they sort of have a slightly mucky look about them. I don't, I don't like cleaning these. There's a very light coat of silver paint on these. And I think it rubs away quite uh, readily. So the diner I've only just recently got when I showed this set with the uh, the diesel, which uh, the diesel locomotive which it originally came with in the set. Um, I didn't have the diner, and I've, I got this uh, sort of earlier in the year. So you can see the, the tables in there are all set. So I was quite pleased to complete that and, and get the get the uh, the diner to go with it. And if you look in the insert picture there, I'll show you. There's the the earlier style TC coaches with the the uh, red band running through the windows. So let's have a look at the uh, the observation. I think the, the dome is lovely on that. And you've got those windows curving around the end. And that seems, looks like it could have a, a dummy light on there. I think the uh, the earlier ones had a had that painted in red perhaps, or maybe I'm imagining that, but I thought they were painted in red. So, uh, see the, the seating through there. And again, you can see the, the slight wear on the silver paint. It's a very light coat of paint on these. It's just like a, a drift of paint on them. I think the earlier ones had uh, silver painted roofs and uh, I think they were unpainted on the sides perhaps. But uh, yeah, let's give this a little power and get her onto the outside line and uh, see how she does with that. So uh, I think we'll put that down on the half wave, I think. Be quite gentle with it through this set of points. We've got the 
whole train in the shop there. So sadly, I didn't go quite far enough because I was going to close those points up. So let's just uh, nudge her a little bit further forward. Just beyond the bridge, I think. There we go. So I think we'll uh, just close those points for now. So 1B and 2B so we don't have any accidents. And then uh, we'll just run a, around the outside line the once and get her back to the station, I think. look quite shiny in the light, don't they? Those coaches, they reflect quite nicely, lovely and bright, especially with the red stripe. I'd forgotten to close those points, so it looks like we'll, uh, we'll go over the elevated section again. And I think we'd better Just stop her there, I think, while we deal with the points for the downward section, otherwise we're gonna run into extreme trouble here. So, let's do that one, and that one, and we'll do 8R. And I think we can run straight back into the station as I've got that set there. So let's give this a little bit more power now. control when she's on half wave coming down there. And gently through the point work there. Sounds a little bit bumpy over that curved point, doesn't it? And we've got a, a stall on the uh, diamond crossing there. Not entirely unexpected. But uh, let's uh, see if we can encourage her back into life. The wheels are quite worn. The plating's worn through on this locomotive. So it's, it's seen quite a bit of track time. I should have pushed that back further. Let's, uh, Let's go back a little bit further. So she's sitting on plastic there at the moment. There we go, we're sitting on, on steel track again now rather than plastic joints. Yeah, it doesn't like that, does it? So let's, uh, let's roll that back. So let's see. Let's go on, to a, go on to full wave and see if that makes a difference. Still a little bit of a stutter. And then we've got to, quite a derailment there too. So it didn't do this in the practice run. So there I've got those uh, re-railed. I'm not entirely sure whether it's that curved point having a go at the, uh, the coaches there. Although I was running this earlier without uh, really any incidents. Uh, this is always Sod's Law when you uh, pick up a camera. So let's see if we can get that back into the station as we were planning now. Again, that lovely shine on those coaches. Let's see her come underneath the canopy there. And we'll 
bring her right towards the end of the station there. A noisy old thing on half wave, isn't she? So we'll bring that to a stop there and we'll just uh, isolate her in the platform, I think. And then we'll uh, switch a couple of points while we're at it. So we're going to get the Lord Westward around there and, and collect her in a moment. So we want to open, uh, what is it, number 1R to get the Lord Westward onto the turntable. Now she's sitting in the, uh, the sidings over here. So uh, I've knocked these uh, engine sheds in the process of uh, re-railing those um, coaches. So this is the engine shed I mentioned last week that I'd got coming in the post. So I hadn't realized when I'd, uh, when I'd bought it that it was missing its windows, but they are just plain acetate sheets. So there's no detail missing. So that's, uh, that's easily solved. So let's just uh, widen this camera now. There's a very strong possibility we're going to get a stall along here somewhere because this, this track isn't really prepared. It's only, only screwed down or pinned down to this point. The rest of this is completely sort of stood in really just for looks. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to get a stall somewhere along here. So let's see if, we'll, uh, if we can get a little power through here. And uh, I still got the uh, the TC Pacific moving behind me, so I thought I'd had isolated that uh, train, but obviously not. So hopefully we have now. So uh, let's just have a quick look over here. Yeah, I've got that point set correctly. This time, let's give this a little power. Yeah, and she is completely, uh, completely dead. I'm just going to bring that along a little bit and we'll give that a little bit more power. No, nope, we are completely and totally dead. So let me see what the, uh, what the problem is here. So all the points are set correctly, so it's just a really bad track. So let's push this along a little bit and let's see if we have some uh, power now yeah I can see where the dead track is so it's at this point here so I've got to do something about this really need the time to uh, try and screw this down and get all the joints and the fish plates mended there we go so that is the uh, the homemade chuff chuff sandbox in in the tender there. Let's rotate the the turntable. And there we have it. So I haven't bothered putting the fencing on yet because I've still got quite a bit of work to do in this area. And as you can see, I just knocked knocked these buildings while I was trying to re-rail the uh, those uh, TC coaches. But uh, yeah, this, this is all a bit sort of makeshift, as you can see, and uh, they're all dodgy old loose rail joiners or fish pl plates there. So uh, as I say, it really wasn't a surprise that we didn't get a, a smooth run on there at all. So let's uh, let's bring Lord Westwood off the turntable now and have a have a quick look at her. The, uh, the scraper so very simple just that's the sandpaper and you can see the sort of uh, membrane down there through the hole in the bottom of the tender so we'll, we'll just pop that back on I think we're, uh, we're all in there so let's open up a few points so I think uh, 
we will take her through here. So if we look on there, we're on the, on the blue line at the moment. We're gonna take her through the, the cross over there, which is 4-0. I don't know whether we're getting any, any focus on there or not. So uh, let's, uh, let's open up that. And to make this work, we need to do one as well. There we go. So let's um, run her through here. Now I have got a bit of weight in the tenders of, of both of these models, because sometimes I have a tendency to drag those back wheels and there isn't quite enough uh, pull on the wheels to make them pull through the scraper to make the noise. So the added weight in the tender really makes a difference. So then I think I need to change number one, one oh again. Sorry, I'm looking behind me, not pointing the camera in any particular direction. So let's change the direction of the locomotive and we'll uh, roll her backwards now. See if we can have a, a gentle coupling. Sadly, just hidden behind the clock tower there. That wasn't very well planned at all. So let's pull this set of coaches out now. drag those coaches all the way out through there there we have it so let's uh, just close points number eight so we've got the entire outside line uninterrupted and I know we've seen uh, Lord Westwood a few videos ago well, perhaps quite a few videos away ago now but uh, she seemed like the logical one to uh, to have a go with seems I've been swapping the uh, sound boxes around for for quite some time, so let's uh, let's give this some power now and just have a have a listen. I think uh, Trying Hornby started putting these Chuff Chuff sandboxes in in about 1970, 71. They were a new item. So I think they're in a number of, number of models early on, the, the halls and the, uh, the Britannia got it. Obviously the, the TC locomotive we just saw had it. I think that was a bit later. I'm not sure whether the uh, Battle of Britain, the Winston Churchill ever got it. But, um, it's a uh, Quite, a, quite an interesting thing. So uh, the Flying Scotsman definitely had it, but uh, my dodgy old Flying Scotsman with the uh, um, glowing firebox and so on that I've been fiddling with recently can have this in the tender. I've had it in the, in the video in the past, but the little metal clip which goes on the rear axle, I took off because the, uh, the wheels were struggling. The rear wheel was derailing, so um, I, I took it off and put it somewhere safe, but sadly have been unable to find it. Um, so I'm hoping to find the clip and uh, get uh, get that one with one of these sandboxes which I've just made. 
and have her running then we'll be able to see the uh, the LED glowing firebox that I've made as well. Let's stop that there and just close a, a couple of points up and then we'll run that round and we'll uh, whip the tender off and have a have a quick look inside and see if we can see if we can open her up and have a look. See if I can make that happen one-handed. I really should have closed those points, shouldn't I? So let's, uh, let's run this backwards again. Yeah, so number 40 needs to be here. Uh, closed. stop her there and we'll, let's see if we can have a quick look inside this tender before we go but uh, I know it's been a sort of unusual video but uh, that's sort of what I've been up to during this week so as I say it's been quite busy work-wise so time for the railway has been uh, quite limited I'm uh, really hoping for some more time off in July when I can uh, get to uh, get stuck in with the the rest of the uh, getting the turntable sorted out in that area got a couple of switches to find and uh, a little bit of wiring let's see if we can undo this one one-handed there we go and I'm sure I've got a princess uh, black princess somewhere that's missing at sandbox too so I've made a couple of them now so hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to get those uh, installed and see those running because we haven't had a princess on the railway for a while. So there's a securing screw. There's the added weight. So it does have the metal weight in there to start with. And I've put these other pieces of lead in there, which which give it uh, quite a nice bit of weight. So let's pop that on there, and then you can see through the hole there. You see the the striker or the scraper. That's what it is. That's the bit that I've put somewhere safe for the Flying Scotsman. So, of course, I could make one of those out if I could find something strong enough. So there, there is a, the sound box that I made. The first one I made and fitted. So you can see where the, uh, the support structures have been pulled away, but that's, uh, that's quite effective. If I run my fingernail there so that's quite good so there, there's the one we, we're just waiting for the the glue to dry on that one and that's either going to go in the flying scotsman or, or the uh, or the princess so let's see let's just uh, stand that one on so that just slots in there I've got that the wrong side There we go. So of course it makes a better sound when you've got the, the tender top on. This doesn't sound quite right. Let's have a look. There we go. Sorry, that's out of camera. So you can see as that scraper goes on there. Let's see if I have to put that on there. So it really needs the echo the bounce back from there so when my hand was around it you got a much better sound so let's see what happens there there we go so inside the uh, the tender there obviously you get get a bit more echo and I have put a piece of um, foam in there just to take the sort of edge off it because sometimes they are a little bit on the, the shrill side so I think this um, protrusion on the top there which I've copied from the original 
I think uh, that just helps helps it stay in position. So I thought, seems as it was on the original. I, I better put it onto the uh, put it onto the uh, the copy that I've made. But uh, I think that's about it for today. Thanks again for watching. It's uh, hugely appreciated. I know it's been a sort of an unusual sort of video, but uh, hopefully you've uh, enjoyed that. Let's just roll that forward. And uh, doesn't she sound quiet without the uh, the noisy tender on? So um, I'll get this lot back together, and uh, if you look back next time, we'll uh, we'll try and have something else interesting to look at. Goodbye now.